Welcome back to the Forensics Detailing Channel, guys. So I just dropped off my uh, M140 and been given a Mini Cooper S manual two liter turbo thing, I think. I know nothing about these cars. Um, I just thought I'd talk about the car for a second because I've just been pooling around in it, seeing if I like it and uh, made some notes on kind of my thoughts on the car. <laughs> like an informal review. First of all, if there's any Mini enthusiasts here, uh, I'm not one of them, so if I say anything that upsets you, don't get too too upset, you know, it's just me thinking out loud about the car. First of all, the exterior styling on the car, guys, you are, you're either going to love the way Minis look, or you're going to kind of hate them. Uh, I don't, I'm not overly keen on like the, the look of them, I prefer the look of them from the front than I do the rear, I don't like the rear tail lights, there's something about them that looks a bit dated and, and, and wrong. Um, Generally, you know, a little sort of rounded hot hatch like that is never going to be look awesome. But there's something about the Mini that doesn't quite do it for me, I, and I can't even put my finger on it. Uh, but like I say, I quite like the front of this car. It's got loads of little sort of weird plastic chrome and lots of gloss plastics on it, and little styling things on this car, which for me don't quite work, and it just looks a bit, it just looks a bit too weird. Um, so yeah, not really a fan, um, too much plastic chrome. It's okay, it's different is what I've put here. Next thing, interior. It's a lot kind of funky on the inside, aren't they? They've got that, the, the claim to fame is the big circular kind of center console display. Um, now, I kind of quite like the inside of this car. There's a, the thing with it is, it can't help but first notice the feel of some of the materials like the dashboard, the steering wheel, this this rubbery plastic feel that doesn't feel particularly high quality, the upholstery, like the, the parcel shelf, it all feels a bit cheap and fuzzy. Um, the fabric seats are okay. Um, when, uh, when you're driving the car, the most annoying thing about this Mini Cooper S is the whole time I'm driving it, the passenger seat is resonating and vibrating and making a vibrating noise that was after a few minutes I noticed and then it started driving me absolutely bonkers. It's quite, you get quite a lot of the engine noise and, and tyre noise in the cockpit of this car as well. It's quite loud. Um, I don't mind that so much, but I just noticed it because the BMW is a lot better on that front. It's very well kind of insulated. Um, decent visibility, especially going forward and the wing mirrors, perhaps obviously a smaller rear view um, visibility but not too bad um, yeah the leather in there the guest steering wheel gaiter and the little bit leather inserts on the steering wheel all feels kind of cheap most of the controls the little plastic dolls feel a little bit cheap to me well some of them are okay not too bad actually I'd give it sort of like a 7 out of 10 for the interior um, the drive on the car when I first got in this and did a little pull down the sort of dual carriageway and I thought this thing is a gutless old gutless engine in this thing it's not just i'm used to you know flooring it in an m140 which has a ridiculous amount of power and torque and you go into uh, you know a little mini cooper with a two liter turbo charged engine it doesn't have that same power but then after the more i started driving around in the car the more i realized it is quite pokey and the engine feels really nice actually it likes being revved and you start to enjoy revving the engine more uh, Now we just need a nice clear road. Don't go left. Nobody go left. Nobody go. Oh, he's going straight over. Damn it. Damn it. Okay, anyway, you, know, you can never get any roads to yourself, can you? So we're we'll stuck behind a big woman in a crossover car that she doesn't even need to be driving. Oh yeah. Oh, what a shame. This car, I know it's a cliche, but it definitely feels really nice and nimble. What I'm feeling now is the road underneath me the suspension is stiff enough that you can feel the slight undulations. If there's going to be holes and bumps and uneven row, yeah, you're going to suffer from that. And so some people, but this is what the car's all about, isn't it? It's supposed to be sporty and fun. And I love 
the way you can really feel the grip in the corner and you can really feel the sort of handling, the control. It's just fun, the little short wheelbase, nice stiff chassis and very responsive little steering wheel <laughs> which feels good. The engine, okay so I'm in third at the moment just following traffic doesn't have that I mean I'm out of the power band at the moment but that turbo as well you don't always feel like you've got that power there but you need to be revving this engine and when it gets up into the higher rev range it's got some nice poke there and you can actually enjoy it and like I, I said earlier on you can have too much poke and the car could be too quick and you can lose stuff cars are getting ridiculously fast nowadays so the first thing I did when I got in this car and gave it a little rev is thought this car is not not powerful enough but I might have said I'm comparing it to the M M140 which is ridiculously powerful and too powerful really for the roads and you know if I had had one M140 in my 20s I'd be dead now um, so this car is probably pe plenty powerful you just need to get into that power band and if you're down the bottom of the rev range you haven't got that instant power you need to build it up a little bit which is kind of nice it reminds me of when I used to um, first drive first started driving you used to have to rag the bollocks out of your car to to uh, to enjoy it um, and this feels a little bit like that even though it's a turbo so we're just going to give it a nice little pull off the lights which is good or well, not off the lights off the junction so we can driving mad guys we're on a main road here so I'm just giving the car it's a little sporty car that's meant to be revved you know but we're not going to be um, up the arse of the car in front or doing anything stupid once once you're in traffic you don't drive like an idiot do you um, bit of an impromptu video this so if there was no cars here you could really so this is nice smooth road This is where the car's fun guys, when you've got nice twisty little kind of corners and you want to enjoy the handling a little bit. Obviously there's cars around so I'm not going to be throwing this thing into corners but you know you can just feel, you can actually feel that handling. It's enjoyable this car, it's fun. I think I've done a good job with it, it's not, I was chatting to Reg about them earlier on, I mean I, the first thing I notice is that there's some cheap components in here, but it's not a Ferrari, is it? It's a little Mini. There's a lot of cheap plastics, cheap feeling plastics. Um, especially this, the, the disappointment is the materials on the steering wheel. If they could have just used some slightly higher quality materials, the gear change is a little bit on the heavy, clunky side, which is a bit of a shame. You do get used to that. The gear stick's about in the right place. It's a good length don't have too many problems finding the gears but it just feels a bit rubbery getting them in there so again you'll probably get used to that a little bit but there's some just some slight easy wins that Mini I think BMW have missed here and that could have been one a slightly smoother gear change and gear stick and two a steering wheel which feels a little bit higher quality because you've got your hand on this steering wheel all the time that dry plastic on the outside is not pleasant and because the car is so nice to handle you know the actual feel of the handling it'd be nice to have a steering wheel that just you wanted to hold on to rather than you notice feels a little bit a little bit um horrible now where are you going love god blimey i can't do any more than the signal right can you some people they just can't drive god bless them and unfortunately, the reality of car ownership nowadays, guys, in the UK, got to get a good old moan in there, got to get a whinge in. The reality is, the chances of you ever getting on a road without having a car in front of you to, to enjoy the car is minimal. Even now, if you go out on a Sunday morning for a, for a spirited drive, you will get stuck behind somewhere pretty much everywhere you go. There are some exceptions to that, though, and some of the roads north of the... A27 where I am there's some good roads actually but during the week you've got no chance of getting clear road anywhere nowadays you could all if anyone said to me what is the point of having a performance car in the UK 
be hard to disagree with them really wouldn't it in other countries where you've got less volume of traffic for sure you know it makes sense in the UK very rare where you can enjoy the performance of your car I know um, some people be saying well you shouldn't be driving them fast on the road when you have a performance car guys you you drive them every now and then you like to experience the acceleration and the speed don't you within sensible reasons you don't go or at least I don't go driving them like a, I'm on a racetrack um, on the roads when you become a parent you lose you lose the will to do that because you life becomes a little bit more precious as you become a little bit more responsible doesn't it but we all still like to have a um, a good drive oh I can give this a little bit of poke down the uh, motorway now which will be nice I don't want to tuck inside this guy really Go, 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 go. And we're going. Oh, and we're off. Look at that, we've got out. Here we go. Oh, traction control kicks in. I said earlier on, it kicks in a little bit too easy on this car. I, you feel that revving though? I mean, it has got some poke, this car. It's just about right. Okay, we're up to 70 now. So, you know, the, the, the poke on the car is just about right. You begin to start to, what, what it lacks is that real feeling of like someone booting you in the arse as you accelerate. It lacks that. You get, but you get the sound of the rev and you start to realize you're going quite quick. Um, the nice thing about that is that to get the most out of the car, you have to be in the kind of higher rev range, which is how a car should be. And I think we are now got a traffic jam ahead. We have, as always, the A27 is constant gridlock. Modern day England, 24 by seven gridlock, look at that. And it is like this all day, every day. So we'll try and go bypass it and hit even more traffic. Going through town, this is a long detour as well. <laughs> pretty fun, it pretty easy to drive. I'm enjoying the manual which can be a pain in the ass the older you get. <laughs> when you ever get sick of a manual, that means you're getting old. Uh, wrong gear, see if it can handle pulling away in third. Yeah, it can. When you're in that low gear, the turbo doesn't like kicking in. It needs a bit of pressure to kick in. Notice that. It's a bit smoother, but then that's bad driving for me anyway, isn't it? Overall, guys, this is an enjoyable little car that is not bad. If it was all about fun for you, then this car would definitely be an option. So it's a proper little petrol heads car, this. And people that buy it will buy it, I think, for the handling. You wouldn't buy it for the practicality, although type town cars, you can get your shopping in the back, you can get two small, three small kids in the back if you really had to, chuck them in the booth, they don't fit in the back. All right, guys, I'll be back in a bit. It ain't leaving. That's a grieving me. Now, what else, guys? Brakes are pretty decent. It unsettles the car quite a lot because it's obviously a small, light car when you're braking with this thing. It doesn't have massive braking, you know, braking power on it, but it's a light car, so you probably don't need to have huge brakes. You can stop okay with this, but it does unsettle the car, obviously. Um, now, the next thing about this car, guys, the handling on it is superb. The stiffness of the suspension and the 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 shock absorbers and all that the handling the suspension whatever you want to call it the ride that's the word i'm looking for quite stiff but it is perfect for this car just how i'd want it to be i wouldn't want to change anything on the ride it's not too brutal for the english roads but you know you're in a car with a firm setup the short wheelbase guys and the steering on the car are really nice one of the coolest thing is when you fire this car into a corner at speed and the turning on the car is lovely it's nice and sharp and you get it you know where you're leaning on the car a little bit and it just feels so much fun and awesome the 
electronic traction control is a little bit over sensitive kicks in a little bit too soon but you could turn that off if you want to have more fun you know if you're driving it really spiritedly but you don't most of the time but you know what i mean if you're on a track or having fun on an empty road if you can ever find one of those but i loved really loved the handling of this car um the steering is obviously a little bit light when you're it's not a cruiser is it when you're going down the motorway you can get up to speed quite quickly in this and then when you are up to speed it's quite light with that steering it's not a cruiser but it's a mini so that kind of goes without saying um that was the best thing though that the, the handling like the and the turning i really like the steering feel on the car at lower speeds when you're going through corners brilliant Overall, Mini Mini Cooper S, would I have one of these cars? Uh, no, I wouldn't. They've never been quite for me, but I can see. The cool thing is, the car got me asking that question because I was really starting to enjoy myself. And I've only driven it for, uh, you know, a few miles. I'm going to drive it a little bit more. And I, th I think what I'm going to get out of this is that I'm going to have a healthy amount of respect for this car, even though it's not quite right for me. It's not powerful enough. It's not aggressive enough. Um, for what I want, you know, now I've had a taste of that. Um, you know, I want something that can really tear down the roads most of the time, although I understand not everyone does. Um, it's not quite right as a family car, you know, even it's just going to be everything is too compact on it. So it doesn't quite fit in with what I need. If I was younger, you know, maybe, it, it, and I'd have got, got it, got one earlier on, I could have got addicted to the whole mini thing, but I just never went, went down that road. So cool car. I can see what the fun is all about, and uh, I'm just enjoying driving it, and I'm going to take it for a, and another little spin later on. So um, let me know what you think of these mini mini cooper s's guys it's got loads of john cooper works badges over it i know there's all these different editions and stuff very poorly informed about minis i don't know any about all the different cars that are out there and all the variants and all this sort of stuff so if you do whack that in the comments and put your thoughts on them fun fun interesting funky little car um I, how much does this is this car worth as well? What what I'm looking at and thinking, what it's got to be a 25 grand car, something like that. No idea. So I'd be interested in what the thing's worth as well. Um, so that's it from this one. Just an impromptu video. I'm not going to wash this car either. It's it's who who would? Um, okay, guys. Thank you very much for watching. See you soon. Bye for now.